Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains and welcome to another layout design video. And for today I have a, a really nice end scale, quite a large design, seven and a half by five meters. And the client requested a track plan in Pico code 55. So that's what you see here. This is what I'm going to call the original track plan. And we also have one in Kato Unitrack. So both plans are available on my Patreon page. But do have a look there if you want to download the track plan in the Anyreal file. One thing to note is we're modeling the modern era and the design does need to reflect that. So let's have a closer look at the room first to better understand the layout. There's a lot of windows along the north and the east side. So that's why there is a 10 centimeter gap here. So you can close windows, a very practical item, but do you need to look at that? There's a door down here leading to the kitchen and scroll down. There's another entryway right here that we somehow need to be able to clear. Other than that, we have the entire room to our uh, disposal. This is the most ideal benchwork shape that we came to. So you see, if I just put some, some spacers in here, um, you need to be able to pass through on this side, same on this side. It's getting a little bit tight, but in a moment you understand why this dimension is the way that it is. And the same here on the left, you see we're not fully meeting the 10 centimeters, but you'll see in a minute why that is like that. There's still a gap down below to, to pass through. And here on the left, we have, uh, yeah, it's, it's getting a bit narrow, but there's still uh, enough space for someone to stand. But if I plop this guy here, then you can see it's still plenty of space for someone to stand and operate the layout. Now, the client requested the benchwork to be built with the ABR benchwork system. So that's what you see here. Here are all the different parts and components that are available to this benchwork system and how they build up to make the layout as it is. And because of the dimensions of the system, you see um, that's why this dimension here is a little bit narrower than the ideal, but don't worry, it's just a passageway, so it doesn't really matter that much. So now we have a better understanding of the room. Let's have a look at the track plan and what's happening. So this is a general lay of the land. On the right, it's flat and a lower leveled. And then at some point, the track will wind up here and go up. Darker colors are higher elevated. And then go up and back here. There's some more industries back here. And then on this uh, blob, this peninsula, it will wind back down again. And this lower section right here has a lot of industries. So let's start here on the right on the yard. And the, it's decided to make this a stub end yard because you see there is no staging. So by making a stub end yard, we can make it larger and this can double as a staging. So you can have some nice trains here stacked up. Now we do have an interchange further down the line, but I'll get that back to that in a minute. Let me just zoom in and rotate the uh, the yard throat to get a better idea of what's happening here so you see the dark color we have the main line here we have two arrival departure tracks and then we have seven yard tracks and everything above that is the engine facility and the key feature is this crossover here that uh, allows arriving trains to go straight into the arrival departure track and departing trains to depart straight here onto the main line without fouling this yard lead so you can still switch the uh, yard to classify uh, cars um, and have trains arriving and departing. So like I said, everything north here is the engine facility. So on the left, we have four tracks going into the engine uh, maintenance facility. Then we have two pit tracks. And here on the right, we have three tracks for fueling and sanding and one longer track that can act as a storage track for maintenance away equipment, and stuff like that. Do note that the client wanted a large engine facility to display a lot of his models that he has. So that's why it's relatively big. So heading south after the yard, we have a double track main line, and remember we're modeling the modern era. So we really need to take our space and have long sidings and big industries as it is in the modern day. So here is a, a power plant, a coal power plant, and that's the facility. So we have one passing siding here um, where you can take your train off the main line while you switch around the cars from the storage track to the offloading track right here. This little track here that goes to the side, that just is to indicate that, that the world is larger than the layout. This blob here also allows you to turn the train. And if you wanted to have continuous running, you can, you can sacrifice one of the arrival departure tracks and basically have a double track main line, which you see right here, just like that. And having the loop here also re reaffirmed my decision to have a, a stub end yard because you can just come into the yard from whichever uh, direction you want, either going or not going through the loop. 
Now, if you're looking for inspiration for your own layout, or if you want to get started in the hobby on the right foot, or you're struggling with the design, please have a look at my uh, website, modelrailroaddesigns.com, where you can find loads of information in all types of track plans. So moving to the north, here we have just a classical switching arrangement. Uh, the only thing that's not classical is that the train track actually splits here. So we have this line here that continues straight. There's a crossing. This would be the main line of direction. And we had head up the loop. And here we come back from the lower section. I'll talk about that later where we cross the track as well to go in there. Other than that, here we have some industries. We have two tracks, one, two. And a, a lumber loading facility here. The lumber yard is just off uh, layout. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And then here we have a green facility. Client also wanted the industries to tie in to each other in the layout. That's not super prototypical, but I understand why it would want that. Makes it for interesting operations. So the grain loading facility here ties in with the, uh, the bakery and the brewery uh, on the other side of the layout. And this lumber facility ties into a uh, furniture company on the other side of the layout. Let's continue as we head up this loop, the 1.7% grade. This track here, I will get back to that. So as we head up here, we have a, a long run. We do dive into a tunnel just to lose the train out of sight and also to make this lower area uh, more visually appealing and not having you know all these trains going left and right. Just wanna have it out of the way for this section. And uh, here, uh, the continuation, the train can be seen in the background, which is nice as well, but sometimes you just want to have it out of sight. That makes any sense. Here we have, again, we have a siding, long siding, and then here we go into a, uh, a, a coal mine, where again, this ties into the coal power plant that we just saw. This is also a great passing siding if you're running trains in two directions, because basically this is a single line uh, part of the loop. And if you want to run trains in both directions, then you need a passing siding. So after that, we wind down here. We're going back a downhill and we go around this uh, mine here. It's a gravel facility where they mine for aggregate. And this is very prototypical uh, for modern day. You can look up various mines and this is how they can look. And this also fits great here on this blob. You really want to make use of these blobs. And if I just zoom out before we get to the switching area, that's a little bit how you have to, at a high over level, uh, design your layout. You want to have something like a yard. Okay. And they have, want to have an empty section of track where you can just enjoy the train and let it run. Then you can have an industry and then you want to have an empty section of track again. So in this case, that could be actually passing the yard. Here it is a little bit more congested. Immediately after the yard, there is a, a town and then some there's town and some industries. Uh, you could actually opt if you don't want to switch that much to just leave this out. Just have double track right here and a few crossovers and that's it. But if you want to have a little bit more switching then this is a great feature. And then again, we go to an empty section. So that's what you see right here. Empty, empty, empty all the way back. We have a calling facility, but you could just pass that if you're not a coal train and have a nice long run all the way down here back down, uh, down the mountain pass, and into this uh, big switching facility here that even, ha even has a small yard. So let's have a closer look at that. What are we looking at? There's a lot of tracks right now. So let me just put on the different track colors. And here you can see uh, the main line in turquoise that goes all the way through this section. And first let's do the tracks here in the south. It's easy. These are three storage tracks. That's something the client requested. Uh, specifically storage tracks. I also have one of these tracks uh, signed up to be an interchange track. And the interchange is this uh, track that's right here leading off layout. So that basically means you can spot and pick up cars from this track and it acts as a kind of staging. So you can swap these cars out um, after the operation session or just as you go. Then we have this black track here that is a siding and it's a very long siding. Um, you will say it's two sidings because you can cross over from to cross right there and right there. And all the yellow are industry uh, spurs. Now we are going to be running with a helper duty, helper engines. So what does that mean? That means when you're in the yard here on the right, in this uh, lavender color, you need to stick on some extra engines because we have this pass here where we go up. And at the end of the pass, we go back down. 
and these helper engines, uh, once the train arrives, go to this dark track right here. So that's what you're seeing right here, a special track where engines can park, they can be fueled here uh, from this, uh, yeah, piece of dirt road where the engines would just drive up to the track and fuel, very portable for modern day operations. So talking about helper engines, what are you going to do with them on the way back? Now, if you'll just continue the main line, you can use this track right here and just head back to the yard just like that. There's no grade, so you don't really need a helper engine. You could also turn the train around, and then obviously you're going over the uh, the pass again, quote unquote pass, and then you're gonna need the helper engine to go up here and back down here the loop, just to make sure that you get the train under control and can break it. There's a second option if you wanna use those helper engines, and that is because we made this little track right here. It splits off and it reconnects here just before the um, yeah the pass basically where you go up and over and back down here on this side. So that would be a great use if you wanna use those helper engines again, give them some purpose, uh, just go over, do a loop, uh, then pass this industry area, and then you can head off back into the yard. Again, that's personal preference. You can also leave this section out right there. So going back to this area, let's have a bit of a closer look. Here's that mine that we talked about. It basically only has a one along track just to load the uh, the hoppers. Let me just turn on these tags. Um, here's the bakery. Yeah, and this was the brewery. That's how it was. And here is the furniture company. Um, and do note, if you download the track plan on the Patreon, you also have these uh, layers. You can turn these tags on and off as you wish. It's scrapyard here in the north, some steel half fabricates as well. And the goal is a bit to create industries that are interesting and also create in interesting traffic. So we have a load of gondolas here for this section. And of course, a lot of coal cars here from the mine. And another thing you want to do when, when, when making and design the scenery is try to make it as realistic as you can. So here, this, as, though this is rural, there will be some kind of dirt road because there's a turnout here and a bridge. Uh, and then a tunnel. So this requires maintenance, so there has to be some kind of access road. And the same right here. I'm not saying to make roads all parallel to all the track that you have, no. But in some areas, it can really become a nice design feature. So we already went through this partially. Um, this is just a, a team track kind of situation where you can offload the aggregates, again, that we just loaded. And here we have a LNG fueling facility small simpleton town right here just anywhere in the u.s always nice to model that and depending on the stores and the places you can really locate it to your uh, your, your area on my patreon page will also be more information where the grades start and where the onset starts and don't forget there you also find all the track plan and the list of components for the uh, kato unitrack design thank you guys all for watching that's it for today bye bye